Hi there, this is Kavita Sharma and I'm here today to talk about what is changing in the new PMP exam starting tomorrow which is 2nd January. Before I move further, I wish you a very very happy new year. Um, coming back to the topic, what is there, what is changing in the PMP exam 2021? So. All of you who are older in the system, please understand there is something called processes, knowledge area, input tools and techniques and output, all of that is gone, gone, uh, not there. What is there in the PMP exam? So um, PMI has released their declaration as to what is there in the, what is changing in the PMP exam. You can see all of that in the URL. Let me walk you through as to what is there in the in new PMP exam. So this is the website, if you follow the URL, it talks about the PMP exam is changing starting 2nd January. Um, what is changing? The domains um, are changing. Previously, we used to have domains called initiating, planning, monitoring and controlling, closing, etc. All of that is gone. Now there are three domains which are people, processes and business environment. So these three new domains have come up. Um, there are changes in the question type, the duration. I'm going to talk about that. I have slides on that. You can also download to know more as to what is domain and what is content outlined here. Um, PMP exam is typically based on the PMP exam content outline. This content outline, which is the which is applicable starting 2nd January is available here download it so that you can understand what is changing so before i go forward let me talk about what is changing in the new pmp exam what is the context and why it is changing so that you have a better holistic view of the entire changes so pmi started a new atp program sometimes back it used to be called rep you might have heard this name registered education providers this is gone starting 20 and 2020 this program is disabled or um, seized now starting 2021 it you know this program started somewhere around mid of 2020 and pmi was checking people and so on so the process started earlier it has come into effect now starting 2021 so there is something called ATP authorized training provider program there are few things which have changed with this particular program coming in one um, which you need to be aware about is that previously in when you had REPs anybody could train you on the PMP subject if he or she is a PMP certified person that has changed um, you need to be trained by PMI, you need to be certified by PMI so that you can train people. So please check whoever from whoever you are taking a training from whether that person is certified by the PMI or not. So there has to be only authorized trainer who can give trainings for PMP exam. The other thing which is change which has changed is Previously, all these REPs used to make their own course material. So if, you, if you've been my student or you have gone somewhere else, you, have, you would have seen different slides by different people because I would prepare my slide in a different way. Another person would prepare the PMP slides. The same material but based on PMBOK, but people have different way of representing information. So everybody used to have their own slides. Now that is changed. PMI gives one course material to all the trainers. So this course material has to be trained by all the trainers to you guys. So there is only one course material. If you take a training from me or from somewhere else, expect that the course material or the PPTs would be similar. So one course material provided by PMI. Obviously, I am authorized to add my content based on um, whatever I feel like so I can add I should not be deleting the content you also as a student get a copy of this material the access is for one year and this 
access would be provided by your trainer when you enroll for their training the cost of this training let's say if you come to my website and you enroll for um, PMP live training starting January I need to provide you this course material in turn I need to pay PMI some money per person so um, expect because I'm paying extra money to PMI you your course gonna be more expensive so any live training if you are taking from me or somewhere else those training gonna be expensive because there is certain part of money which is going to PMI for the course material so you um, whenever you come to my website become my student or become somebody else student you would also have an access at PMI website the PMI website fulfillment website is uh, it's a different name called LO choice or something like that so you would have access for the course material for one year the 35 PDUs which I was providing to you guys earlier f f in turn of getting trained by me would come via PMI directly so these are two main changes let me summarize that for you one a trainer needs to be certified by PMI so there has to be um, or ATP trainer certification please have a look at that whether you are you are getting trained by that trainer or not second there is only one course material which is the access to you would be provided by your trainer on the PMI website there is some money involved and the PMI gonna give you 35 PDUs directly from the website uh, their own fulfillment site what if if you do not want to train yourself using live trainings you have an option to go for self-study now with the new ATP program coming in PMI is the sole provider for any self-study course which gives 35 PDUs so go to pmi.org and then enroll for that self-study program if you look at your website here the URL which I provided to you here on demand you can click on this and then you can see that PMI is giving the training to you guys here you can register here on the PMI website for the self-study program first of all I need to get 35 PDUs um, so this PDU, this is something which I spoke about. You have choice of live training or a self-study course. Go to PMI for a self-study course or do a live training from whoever you would want to. So that, that's one change. Filing the PMP application. Once you have 35 PDU, you need to, so this is step one. Step two is filing the PMP application. How would you file the PMP application? Once you have 35 PDUs, you file the PMP application. It has become easier. Um, from the time and I have released a video um, how to file the PMP application 2021 have a look at that it has become easier from the earlier format so this application once you fill in the application just have a look at the video which is um, prepared by me how to fill the PMP application once you fill the application your application goes through certain rounds of reviews by PMI there are some kind of questions etc and finally your PMI PMP application is approved once this is in the status called approved you would have one year to prepare and sit for the exam so one year um, so here once you have the application in approved status you can sit for the exam three times if you fail but the question of failing should not come in your mind you should sit in the exam to pass the exam that is the um, thought that should be there in your mind um, so how do you go about that once your application is approved for one year you start preparing for the PMP exam how would you prepare you are gonna prepare on three domains remember the processes knowledge area input output uh, all of that is gone now there are three domains and something called enablers I'm gonna show you that slide so you prepare for the PMP exam based on the material which is provided to you by PMI themselves directly um, do a lot of tests here as well 
so tests are very important specifically because a uh, lot of things have changed and a lot of because a lot of things have changed a lot of complexity has arrived it is good idea to practice before you sit for the exam once you um, think that you are ready for the exam schedule the exam go to pmi.org and click on scheduling the exam because your application is in the approved status you have a choice to take the exam from home or the center so look for center in case you would want to go to center or schedule it at home um, if you ask me my choice it's always good to go to the center because there you get calculator a paper and a pencil to write things at home you need to ensure that broadband is working fine there is a room where nobody comes in and goes out um, electricity bandwidth all of these are certain things which comes with a risk so ensure that there are backups or you would have planned for all of the outages etc um, I've seen problems um, where there are bandwidths uh, or wherein there is a noisy room so promote there is a proctor which sits behind the camera for your exam in case he or she is not comfortable they can cancel your exam so ensure that um, you take care of all of that and take a decision based on all those factors to sit for the exam at home or at a prometric or view center once you have scheduled a date for the exam you go there and to pass the exam so that's the last step in the exam you there are changes as well so this exam would have changes like uh, total time number of breaks I'm gonna talk about that as well in the coming slide so you need to the last step is pass the exam all my student pass so you're gonna pass as well so let me walk you through as to what is changed the good thing is you don't have to mug up ITTOs. A lot of people used to say how many processes, how many knowledge area processes, how many uh, process groups and so on. So all of that is gone. However, you would have more to study. So at least 50% the syllabus is huge. Um, you have to study a lot and a um, lot of new tools and techniques have come in so a um, lot more to study PMBOK is not the source but at least you get one PDF which is from PMI which is supposed to be the source of all the PMP examination questions um, so at least you are getting one book or one PDF from PMI what are the changes in the PMP exam you get total time of previously it used to be four hours four hours would be how much 240 minutes together so in case you were taking a break it used to go from this time here again the total time is 230 minutes and there are planned breaks of 10 and 10 minutes you can schedule your break at any point of time I mean there is a logical point of time wherein you can take a scheduled break um, so that's there uh, there are question type have changed so previously we used to have only question and then four single choices only one choice used to be correct so radio buttons and one choice used to be correct now there are different type of questions which have come in uh, obviously this remains I think 70 to 80 percent of the question would be this type which is four choices um, but there are other questions which are there um, so you would have true false questions you would have multi select when I say multi select there are check boxes so check boxes you can select two or three it typically PMI writes you know select two or select three so you would have multi select kind of questions you would also have drag and drop sort of questions for example um, mess laws hierarchy and there are certain you know what is level one so then you need to put in level one from here to here so these are called hot zones or drag and drop questions you might have matching questions so matching from here to here here to here and so on fill in the blanks questions gonna come in so you need to type now 
um, one single choice is the one which I spoke about. So you would have different type of questions. When you are preparing for the exam, please ensure that you practice for all of that kind of questions. The questions which would come to you, they would come 50% of the questions would be based on processes and these are typically the processes which we do you know how good you are in managing cost how good you are in managing and controlling schedule so processes business environment is more about OPA EEF organization types and things like that and people is how do you manage people how do you motivate them how do you work with stakeholder how would you communicate with them so there are three broad categories the questions um, which would come uh, would be 42 percent of the questions are gonna be from people 50 percent from process and eight percent from business environment total questions are 180 questions so in case there are 180 questions processes would have 50 percent of the questions how many questions gonna be on process 90 questions you got it right okay so this is um, the overall changes which has happened for you if you are new to PMP there is no change for you everything is new so just start afresh uh, take take a good training from a good ATP so just start afresh there are there is nothing changing you are new so nothing is changed for you if you are an old aspirant if you my suggestion for you is start afresh because a lot of new concept have come in um, start afresh lot of new concept and it's not about reading that new concept once or doing a patchwork not gonna help you so start afresh join a new training you can um, go and schedule your self-study training from PMI or get into a live class. My suggestion, get into a live class. Um, select any ATP of your choice. With this, I would want to give you an overview of what is changing, um, what is forecasted at kavitasharma.net, what is changing at kavitasharma.net. So, um, a live classes on the new training material is starting on 18th of Jan 2021. If you want to see weekend or weekday classes, please log in at kavitasharma.net, schedule or join the class from there. Um, the new PMP type of questions, as I told you, there are different type of questions, mix and match, radio buttons, check boxes, drag and drop. All of that would be live by February 2021. So good things take time. If there are other providers which are giving, um, you know, an updated question bank, please ensure that you get an access to those kind of questions. The books which you have been reading and which I get a lot of support from all of you. Thank you so much for that. Um, books gonna get updated um, serially when I say serially because PM box 7 is not yet out I'm waiting for PM box 7 the overall look and feel and see what gonna be changing um, but the this is the horizon time which or tentative time which I can think of uh, the practice test gonna be live by March 2021 uh, tentative as I said earlier the PMP ITTO toolbox book gonna take whole lot of changes because there are no ITTOs now. Um, the name would be thought through. Um, as of now, I'm thinking PMP toolbox, but it could be PMP handbook or something like that. Um, expected out date is somewhere around February 2021, at least the draft of it. Uh, for my current student and then based on their feedback it should be uh, out to the live audiences or in the um, you know at Amazon by March 2021 so this would be March 20 expect March 2021 to be live date for, at Amazon um, the study guide which is so I, I read all your comments so study guide is one book which is uh, really admired by all of you and I'm so happy that this particular book has helped you pass the PMP exam, helped you understand the concept. 
um, so this is very um, difficult to rewrite it it's gonna take whole lot of time and um, the expectation is that at least it would be live for my student by April 2021 um, my thought is that I'm gonna send it to my students or people who say they want to review it in the internal community let let you guys review it and it should be out in the market by somewhere around um, May 2021 so this is the um, overall perspective at what am I working on what is changing and so on if you have any questions for me write to me at kavita at kavitasharma.net um, if you want to enroll for my live workshop please enroll at kavitasharma.net thank you for listening in to me I wish you a very happy new year and um...